The problem with nepotistic appointment is that you cannot dismiss them for incompetence as they were never hired to perform in the first place. Nigeria, we are all guilty. It's so sad that we cry daily of incompetence in our ministries, departments, and agencies. Yet, we still employ people and even vote people into office based on religion, culture, and nepotistic connections. People who we can't employ into our private business as a result of incompetence are daily finding their way to public service and public offices as a result of who they know. Otherwise, how can one explain the fact that people who, are, who applied for jobs in MDAs or are screened at interviews are not the ones finally employed, but those who didn't pass through the process, but knows a governor somewhere, a minister, a senator, director, PAMSEC, or knows somebody that knows somebody. You can never imagine the frustration of going through an employment process only to be told, you hear from us. Not because you are not qualified or didn't do well in the process, but because some other persons who were not part of the process would be used to replace you because they know somebody up there. Ministries are selling job slots to highest bidder. Sexual gratification is requested from ladies in return for employment, yet nobody's fired or investigated, and we want to attract the best brains. I laugh. As it is in the public sector, so it is in most professions in Nigeria, including privileges in profession that is supposed to be noble, the legal profession. What's the essence of a good education if you cannot guarantee employment unless you are connected to someone? What's the point reading your books when all you need to be gainfully employed or become a public officer is either to serve as the master's table, as a, um, a minister for labor in Gigi has described it, or your parents would have to beg their way through for you with a note. Please, the bearer is from me. Interview and employ. We cope. As a result, learning is de-emphasized in the place of paper qualification. Are we happy that some of our graduates can't even spell graduation? That's how low we have sunk, and the shame is on all of us. What's the point remaining in a country that doesn't guarantee hope, fairness, and equality, despite the abundance of natural resources? No wonder. A young able bodied men and women would rather cross the desert to Europe for slave jobs or sell their bodies to the highest bidder at home or abroad. I know you say join politics if you want to change the narrative, yet you refuse to make it attractive to bright minds. According to Sonia Okosu, how long shall we be patient before we reach the promised land? Our governors or politicians or presidents face to perform, we vote them back into office. After all, they tar the road to our village or as if they, it was their money because failure these days are benchmark for success. If Jonathan did it that way and failed, Buhari must do it that way. It doesn't matter whether we already know the end result as failure. Forgetting that a wrong precedent set today becomes a conventional practice of tomorrow. Our service chiefs are out of ideas on their job. We insist they remain there because they are from the same community or region with us. We benefit from corruption and corrupt processes. We say it is connection. We must realize that the country is what we make of it as our leaders and rulers are drawn from amongst us, and the little process we circumvent today becomes an impunity tomorrow, if not addressed. I would therefore advocate that as Nigerians, we should remember that we're all the ones in opposition and not the political class. If you see a wrong and refuse to address it because our relations or religious or friends are involved, then we shouldn't blame others when they buy the same practice tomorrow, simply following in the precedence, precedence we overlooked. Yeah, I think that's true. I think I was discussing this with someone recently, where um, conventional practice becomes, uh, I don't know. A, a norm, yes. Yeah, it becomes, it becomes a law. law. We say it's so, in law. Yeah, exactly. It was, to, it was in law, whatever, yeah. um, I circumstances. Think, I think we've established this over time, that the fundamental issue we face as a country is as a result of the fact that the best brains are not in authority. So if we're going to start from the very head, talking about the presidency, going down you know, to ministries, and it's only per people who are well connected and who has you know, the money who make it to those offices. And that's the reason why we continue to face the problems that we face today. Talking about offices, you know, most um, employers, I think the, let me say that the men are, are even at a disadvantage if you do not have money to buy your way through, you know, there are a lot of unemployed young men out there. Meanwhile, the ladies, for those of them who can, you know, go to dinners in short skirts in the evenings, you know, they get employed. And 
this is no, becoming... I, I, I keep asking myself, why are we so short-sighted? Because I, I made a note of something he said. He said, you benefit from corruption, and you say it's connection. Mm -hmm. That means we all, in a sense, are guilty, yeah. in quote. I mean, I try to separate myself, but it makes no difference. If, if the majority are like that, then that's the tide, the way the tide is flowing. So you sort of say, why is it that people are, look the other way, even when they see something that they wouldn't do, but they don't want you. So whenever I, I go to report, people, they don't want you reporting. They don't want you rocking the boat. They want to just say, hush, hush. Why is it? Is it that they feel, um, well, it's the norm. All of us do it. I don't know. What is it that makes people not want to flag up wrong practice? Because for me, it's instinctive. I can't tolerate an environment where people are doing things that I feel ultimately is affecting the whole. Because for me, it's like if we're pulling in one direction, like we're here, we're working, and we're pulling one, and somebody is doing something in a way that is dropping the standard. I feel you're letting us down. So mm. I feel, I forget the sentiment, because I feel we put sentiment over substance too often. Just by an aside, very quickly, sorry, Lily Bruce. I was listening to Sibadjo the other day on one of these conferences, and the guy had details and things he could drop down. And I said to myself, this guy is presidential material. Mm -hmm. he's, look, he's making those points about finances without looking at his notes. And yet, why are you laughing? He's what? the vice president, and he was talking as if he was advising a government. Yeah. So can I just think that our president doesn't make yeah. those kind of points. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, this yeah. guy is doing it without notes. That's Quickly, the brain I didn't want to for. talk mm -hmm. on this, but yeah. you raised this issue. That is the vice president, yeah. the number two person mm -hmm. That's the brain, who though. sits down with the president. Yeah. Yeah. So when they do anything right, they say the presidency is one. Mm -hmm. But here he is giving advice to who now? Yeah, because that, he is. That, that's the problem. Yeah. And, and so for on the issue of dropping the ball, if you complain and it is attended to swiftly, you encourage the next man to complain. Okay. When Fulanese were killing people, I expected Mr. President to say, look, this is not what we stand for. I'm a Fulani man, but this is not what yeah, we stand for. Kind of I'm going to dis wants. deal decisively yeah. Yeah, with really whoever reflected. is yeah. dropping the ball mm. in our name. Yeah. But when that didn't yeah. happen, it's it, 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 that's the, the convention that we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Can, yeah. I, becomes... can I say that? I mean, um, I do agree with you. I mean, I was, uh, just this morning, I was reading a tweet from a young friend of mine, David Hune, who tweeted the same thing about that he, he went through like a school reunion, a wedding brought about a like, mini school reunion. Um, and of all the private school he went to, uh, the class of 40, there were in total about four or six of them remaining in Nigeria. Every other person has, had gone out. So the best and the brightest who can find okay. solace in here are leaving. Oh, and so we, we have this, we're creating this system unknowingly um, where we're just left with a sea of mediocrity. Oh, yeah. And oh, it's, 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 again, from, an, from physics and from economics, we're rewarding it each time. Yeah, that's so it's self about meritocracy. Yeah. So, so I, I, don't find, I mean, I've worked in government for many years, and I find that... Um, you know, when way back in the 60s, when the former president of the U.S. said something about the best and the brightest, and in, in setting up NASA to go to the moon, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, and, and there's no such vision, not even in one agency <laughs> within the system, yeah. within our system, yeah. that you will say the best and the brightest are here. And, and, I know, and, 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 and it's and, amazing. And that's I mean, what you're saying, it's amazing how merit, a merit. A meritocracy. A meritocracy or a merit-based organization can inspire people. Like yeah. if, if you even take our telecoms, I like the fact that there's competition. I feel it's healthy. So once you set up a system that lets people know that this is what you're rewarding, football, whatever, sports, yeah. then you find that people will immediately key into it. So I think what we get, what we're getting, according to what he's saying, is a, is, is a function of what we are endorsing. For me, we are all we endorse it, we agree with it. Once it favors you, it's connection. Yeah. If it doesn't mm -hmm. favor you, yeah. it's, it's corruption. Really. Yeah. So we need to change. Yes. And so well, a zero tolerance, a zero tolerance policy ensures we are all judged by the same rules. After the break, Sandra is tackling a matter that requires a raising of the bar above ground zero. Never mind applying zero tolerance anyway. So Sandra waits to hear from you. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they want. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country 
when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.